Oh, good afternoon. Herb Villa with Retal North America, part of Retal GmbH here at uh, Supercompute, looking at all the big boxes with the blinky lights. But the blinky lights live somewhere, and that's infrastructure. Retal is the world's largest manufacturer of modular enclosure solutions. Um, and this is the world that we're going to, the world of AI, the world of chat GPT, the world of hyperscale and high performance compute. So while it's all nice that we see all of the software and all of the applications, what is most critical is we have to put them someplace. And in order to put them, we have to plug them in. And in order to plug them in, they're gonna get hot. Once they get hot, we're gonna remove the heat. So what we see today is for the hyperscale application, something that is now going to pull more than a megawatt of heat removal from the IT appliances. Rital does not provide- One megawatt per rack? Per in, one megawatt per high density heat removal solution that would support multiple, in this case, OCP form factor uh, racks. Those would be supporting all of your hardware with all of those NVIDIA GPUs that everybody is gonna to get today. So we would see, would we see 100 kilowatts or 150 kilowatts in each of these footprints but all of that with liquid cooling to the chip today, now you can see the DC bus bar as part of the OCP, the water manifold to distribute the water to the individual processors, to the IT appliances, all of that will come back to the one megawatt removal. On the one side will be the technology water, on the other side will be facility water. Everybody. So when you talk about uh, modular, uh, it's, it's a crucial part of how it's designed? Yes, the modularity and redundancy is critical. So while we do have the one megawatt heat exchanger, we have individual drawers. Each tray or each shelf is 250 kilowatts of heat removal capacity, just pumping. The heat exchanger water to water is down here. So with five of these, we have four for the one megawatt heat removal, and then the fifth one, whichever one it may be, is the N plus one for service in case something fails. And uh, uh, can, can you describe a little bit what you see here? So what we're looking here on the backside is the water distribution manifold. Yeah. Excuse us. Uh, yeah. Monitor it. The water distribution Threshold manifold water. supporting water distribution out to the individual footprints supporting the heat removal requirements at the chip level, coming into a manifold that will provide the technology water on one side, pumping it back to the water to water heat exchanger. That is the uh, facility water, the heat coming out of here, transferred to this water through the pumping units, transfer the heat exchanger and out. So all of that heat is going out to facility and ultimately to atmosphere. We have to plan for tomorrow. That's the other part of the modularity is that I'll let you grow into it. I'm not gonna give you one megawatt today unless you need it. I'll start you at 250, I'll start you at 500. Then I'll let you grow into it. Then we'll add the second row, then we'll add the third row. It's going to take time. What Rital wants to talk about today is not the system, it's critical, but the planning. We wanna make sure when, I, when you're ready to deploy this, then I need 400 gallons per minute of water just for one. You're doing a 20 megawatt system, 8,000 gallons. Let me know when you get the water and the electricity. That's great. Is it possible to do a closed water system? It will always be closed. So out to the individual manifolds in the OCP footprints, you will have the uh, supply and return water coming into those. This will, on the facility side, that will also go out to your chiller plant. So that's a closed loop water system. That water will go out to giant uh, outdoor condensers or heat exchangers to dump the uh, scavenged heat out to atmosphere. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how, how you do this differently than other people? The, most, the, the essential feature, the critical feature, is the modularity. This is not a monolithic one megawatt system. This is a modular system. Each shelf has the 250 kilowatt capacity, 250, 500, 750, one megawatt, N plus one, or N plus one, or N plus one. Scale, scale it in, grow into it. Don't give me the whole thing all at once. Let me grow into this. So the modularity 
the individual components, the built-in redundancy for not only each drawer, but the pumping units in there, that will give you, that is the essential feature. That is the critical feature. Do you want to talk a little bit about the other stuff you have? Everything else we see is our standard OCP footprint. And what is important to remember that not everybody will be deploying one megawatt systems. Not everybody will be deploying you know, NVIDIA GPUs. We get that. So we will still have traditional OCP form factors, regular racks, DC bus bar, perhaps an in-rack heat removal unit. But there's also everything else traditional 19-inch rack mount technology in case... What's on this wall there? The liquid cooling package? That's is that the one you talked right about here. before? That's so the that's, one you had in front, right? That's No, this is LCP, liquid cooling package. This is air to water heat exchange because not everything is going to be 100 kilowatts in a footprint. It's going to be standard 19-inch rack mount technology, switches, servers, plain old servers from... Dell, from HPE, from Lenovo, whoever, regular 19 inch. So now instead of having chip cooling, as we have with DLC, we have an, an in-row air to water heat exchanger with multiple fans with supplied by facility chill water. But this is only 50 or 60 kilowatts for heat removal. It's a different form factor for everything else. And also, even when we look at the high density, what is important to remember, the chip cooling is at the processor. It's at that core unit. That's what represents maybe 70% of the total heat load in any rack-mounted chassis. I'm still going to have to scavenge the remainder of that heat. That may be where the traditional LCP system comes in. So Vertal has now the new wide body OCP form factors, right? We want to go double wides. Not sure why, but you know, that's something that they're asking for. Getting a little crazy. So we have the, tra the traditional OCP form factor, the new wide bodies, we'll have it for networking, and also forgetting or not forgetting that we have traditional 19 inch rack mount. That's also going to be part of your data center deployment. I mean, that's, that's the world we're going to live in today. And there's a lot of innovation in the terms of the plumbing hard works and the, the designs of all these. Again, the coolers. essential factor, the scalability. Let me build you out. So we'll provide you that initial form factor, then I could grow it, then I could build it out. If I start with two footprints, three footprints, we'll just keep going. Everything is self-contained, so we have all of the necessary connections. Also, essential, monitoring and control. It's not just about moving water. It is about moving water intelligently. It is about heat removal intelligently so that we know where the thermal loads are. This way we're gonna be able to say, hey, in those two cabinets, I gotta send more water than the rest of the other three cabinets. So that also, the controls are built in. You're gonna plug it in, you're gonna give me two pipes to supply the water, you're gonna give me electricity, and you're gonna give me a network connection. So I'll sit, on, I'll sit in my control center, and I'll see what's going on. It's beautiful. So here at the show, you talk with the whole industry, and they're all interested in this modularity? Yes. Every, so the question is, when do you want to deploy this? Everybody thinks they're going to be doing this today. They're not. They're not. This is all very nice. It is going to take time. Rital wants to help you plan for that. We want to say, look, we know you're going to get there. Let us help you get there together. You're going to start with one. We're going to add two. We're going to do four. Do I do it in a data center, a hyperscale? Maybe you can help you them are. build power plants also. Uh, that's a different conversation, a different which you do not want to ask me about. Yeah. <laughs> Being the next Navy nuke, I'm not going there. But it is. It's about the power transmission. It is about the distribution. It is about the water availability. It is about the environmental impact. It is about global warming and climate change. These are all critical topics we have to discuss. I'm not going to tell you not to get rid of this, in, this technology. We are going to be stuck with it. I want to help you plan for it properly. That's for all. We're not out to sell you a product. We're out to sell you the solution and make it a smart solution. HDMI technology powers the global ecosystem of connected devices, enabling advanced displays that deliver immersive visuals and sound across entertainment, professional, and everyday applications.
As the preferred technology for digital AV connectivity, HDMI technology and the features and benefits it enables links billions of products worldwide, from HDTVs, set-top boxes, and laptops to gaming consoles, projectors, and audio-video receivers. It provides the reliable, high-bandwidth connectivity needed for today's ultra-high-definition video, lifelike color accuracy, and immersive sound formats. HDMI technology drives innovation across industries, including digital signage, medical imaging, education, and esports. With unmatched performance, interoperability, and scalability, HDMI technology continues to define how content is created, shared, and enjoyed around the world.